Isang magandang magandang araw po at magandang buhay sa inyo mga kasambuhay. Ako po si Father Domi Guzman ng Society of St. Paul. At uh, sa ngalan po ng mga pari, mga brothers, mga seminarista ng aming pong kongregasyon sa Pilipinas at sa Macau, at gayon din po sa ngalan ng mga pari ng Archdiocese of Manila at ng TV Maria, kayo po'y aming tinitipan. Ngayon po'y ikalabing apat ng Abril. O kita nyo, halos mga lahati na naman ang buwan ng Abril. At uh, ito po ang simula ng Semana Santa. Okay, tapos na po ang ating 40 days of preparation at uh, for the past five weeks. Tayo po ay naghahanda, di ba, ng atin pong selebrasyon. At uh, ngayon, tayo po ay magdiriwang na ng kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay ng Panginoon. Ah, at ang tawag po natin sa simulang ito ng ating Holy Week ay Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Ayan. At uh, ito nga rin po pala ang Alay Kapwa Sunday. Sa marami pong mga parokya ay magkakaroon po ng special na uh, collection para po sa mga social at uh, social activities at social outreaches po ng uh, mga parokya lalo-lalo na sa mga nangangailangan. Of course, we would like to pray para din po sa ating mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, kasambuhay, yung mga elderly po, yung mga convalencing, yung mga nagpapagaling na mga may sakit at uh, yung inyo po mga caregivers, gayon din po ang mga manlalakbay, mga seafarers, and of course, hindi po natin makakalimutan ang ating mga kaugnayan sa Facebook at YouTube, ang atin pong mga OFWs. No? We would like to specially greet and pray yung grupo po ni uh, Brother Alex Federis, dyan po sa Canada, si Dr. Doroteo Federico at ang kanyang pamilya, si uh, Dorothy at Eric Merck, Annie Adorna, Emily at Dante Reyes, Joy at Alex Reyes, si uh, Dr. Josephine Adorna Guzman at Alicia Adorna, si Mercy at Jose Regino at Jose Adorna Jr. at ang inyo pong mga pamilya. Ginigreet din po pala natin si Nestor at Estela Kirante at ang kanilang anak na si Anika Kirante dyan po sa Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Yan. And um, we'd like to pray also para po sa ating mga regular partners in mission. Kasama na po riyan si Leslie Masigan at ang kanyang pamilya, ang kanyang mga anak po na si Miguel, Sami at si Jake, and si Tony at Lourdes Chowa, si Ed at Norma Arrojado, ang uh, family po ni George at Noemi Villaruz, no? ang kanyang opisina, mga CPAs. No? Alam nyo, very active po sa PICPA itong si George at si Noemi Villaruz. No? Si Didith at Joey Jacob, gayon din po, ang kusina ni Kambal, ni Irma, at ni Delio San Miguel, si Corazon Ochoa at Rosita Kauyan ng Discovery Base sa Hong Kong, si Alma Gonzales at ang kanyang mga, ang kanyang mga anak at pamilya. And uh, of course, we'd like to pray also for Romel Salvador, Gemma Candela, May Asuncion Recio, Rachel Esteban, at Leilani Palladio Himotea. Ngayon naman po ay uh, nais nating i-acknowledge ang ilang mga uh, sharings mula naman sa ating Facebook Messenger account. Uh, una na po riyan si May Savelia Norlenius. Yan. Maraming salamat May sa iyong mga love offerings at sana ay natugon o natugunan ng aming staff ang inyong tinatanong tungkol sa uh, pagpapadala ng love offering. No? Si Luella Arcaya, yan, prayers for the good health and protection, lalo-lalo na sabi niya ng mga Filipino teachers sa Thailand. Yan. Si I.B. Sernan at uh, I.B. Sernan Montejo Morasa, 
Okay, salamat din sa iyong uh, love offerings, no? And uh, uh, we pray for good health, strength, peace, love, determination, focus on God's will and mission para sa iyo at sa iyong pamilya. And uh, we pray for your parents, no? Yung inyong intention para sa inyong mga magulang. Si Grace Kahape Aquino at si uh, Jackie Ann, uh, we'd like also to pray for your intention. Si Jackie Ann po ay OFW sa Riyadh. And uh, sabi niya, nais niyang ipanalangin natin ang kanyang anak na si Andrea Palmaria at uh, ang kanyang mga kaklase sa MedTech Board Exam. Yun. Ha? Bilang magulang, lalo na po bilang OFW, sabi niya, nagagalak po kaming magkaroon ng magandang buhay ang aming mga anak kapalit ang aming mga sakripisyo. Tunay na tunay yan, Jackie Ann. No? I think that is the prayer of every hardworking uh, na OFW. No? Si John Dexter, Sir Bitilio, pasasalamat, pananalangin para sa kaligtasan, kalusugan, kagalingan, kapayapaan ng mga OFWs at ang kanilang mga pamilya, sabi po niya. Si Neniza Napial, um, kanya, simple lang ang hinihingi ko that I be comforted away from home. Totoo yun, ano? Hindi mo maalis yung pangungulila kung ikaw po ay talagang malayo sa iyong pamilya. Si Leonora Abratigin Baa, oh, maraming mga intentions ito. Papasalamat siya kay Father Paul Marquez sa mga inspirations daw, no? Si Jun Tomas, no? Diyan po sa Jeddah. Maraming salamat sa iyong love offering, ha? At uh, kanya, patuloy po akong gabayan sana sa aking gawain. I'm praying for job security. Uh, and if I really have to leave my present job, baka hanap sana ako ng malidipatan, more suited to my skill and my personality. Kanya, where my efforts and dedication will be appreciated and compensated. At gain din kanya, special prayer para kay Christy Sason, bigyan sana ng tibay na malampasan ang mga hamon ng pagiging ina ng tatlong mumunting anghel. Wow! Napakamakata naman. <laughs> si Rosette Canoso, Good health naman para kay Tim Lam, Carmen Lam, at ang dalawang anak na sina Leonard Lam at Nicholas Lam. At sabi dito, paki-include na rin po ang kanilang grandpa na si Lam Ho Wing, who has been suffering from cancer. At uh, sabi ni Rosette, uh, 26 na raw siyang nagtatrabaho ni Corazon dito sa bahay na ito ng mga lamb. Wow, ang ganda naman, ano? So, yes, we will pray for your uh, for your uh, emplo employer, no? Na nawa pagpalain sila upang pagpalain ka rin, di ba? Ngayon naman po, tong hayan natin ang mga readings para po ngayong linggong ito. Sabi ko nga, ang pangalan po ang kumpletong pangalan ng simulang linggong ito ng Semana Santa ay Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Bakit? Sapagkat dalawa po ang Ebanghelyo. Yung Ebanghelyo ng prosesyon ng pagpasok ng Panginoong Hesus sa banal na lunsod ng Jerusalem at gayon din po yung Ebanghelyo naman ng pasyon o pagpapasakit at kamatayan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Bakit nga pala pinagsasama agad yun? Oh? Uh, palagay ko po, makikita natin ang kasagutan dun mismo sa binabanggit ng pari sa simula ng ating celebration. Sabi niya, uh, sa linggong ito, we have the solemn celebration. After five weeks, Christ entered His own city to complete His work as our Messiah. So, nais pong ipaalala ng atin pong dalawang readings ng Ebanghelyo. 
na ang pagpasok ng Panginoong Hesus sa banal na lungsod ng Jerusalem ay upang tupdin ang kanyang pagiging Mesiyas. At uh, ang pagtupad na yan sa pagiging Mesiyas ng Panginoon ay sa pamagitan ng kanyang passion, death, and resurrection. Para ba pinapakita na yung pag-uosana, osana to the son of David, the real kingship of Jesus will happen on the cross and after the cross when finally the Lord is glorified in His resurrection. So yun po palagay ko yung napaagandang ugnayan ng dalawang ebanghelyo na atin pong narinig o maririnig para po sa misa sa araw na ito, Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. No? Now, tignan natin yung dalawang gospel. Yung unang gospel, yung gospel ng prosesyon patungo sa banal na lunsod. Ang isa po sa mga makikita nating detalye o maririnig nating detalye ay pinakuha po ng Panginoong Yesus upang kanyang sakyan, a cult on which no one has ever sat. No? Nais niyang ang kanya pong sasakyan patungo sa banal na lunsod ay isang cult, isang uh, anak ng donkey na hindi pa nasasakyan. Alam niyo po, um, palagay ko, ang punto rito ng Panginoon ay nais niyang ipakita na ang kanyang pagiging Mesiyas ay hindi yung popular na idea. Kasi alam niyo yung mga tao nung araw, panahon ng Panginoon, meron na silang mga popular idea about the Messiah. Kesyo yung Messiah dapat ay uh, military leader. Kesyo yung Messiah dapat ay uh, liberator ng Israel. Ganyan. Politiko. Eh, nais nice ng Panginoon na ipaliwanag na hindi kakaiba. Kakaiba ang kanyang pagiging Mesiyas. So, he rides a cult on which nobody has ever sat. No? Pero maliban dyan, later on sa Ebanghelyo po natin, uh, manggagaling po kay San Lucas eh, yung pagbasa ng pasyon ng Panginoon, meron pong ilang mga bagay sa atin pong pagbasa ng Ebanghelyo ng pasyon ng Panginoong Yesus ayon kay San Lucas na medyo kakaiba sa ibang bersyon ng pasyon. And all of this are telling us na sa kanyang krus, hindi lang po nagpakasakit, hindi lang po dumaan sa paghihirap ang Panginoong Yesus. But ang manifestation po ni St. Luke is that even in His passion, Jesus is a healer. The cross is a healing instrument of the Lord. Hindi lang siya suffering illustration of love, but the healing instrument. Tignan nyo ha, ayong kay San Lucas, nung pong huliin ang Panginoong Yesus, nakuha pa niyang pagalingin yung tinapyas na tenga ng isa sa mga alipin, utusan ng mga punong pare. Ha? Tinapyasan ng tenga eh. And you know, the Lord took the time, even in His arrest, to heal itong si beard ear ng servant. And then, sabi dyan, nung ipinagkanulo o nung dininay ni Peter si Lord three times, ang kakaiba kay St. Luke, eh, sabi dito, Jesus looked at Peter. Tinignan, sinulyapan ni Jesus si Pedro. No? Para bang sinasabi niya kay Pedro, sabi ko na nga sa iyo. Eh. Di ba? Huh. So, and that is what made Peter repent. No? The healing glance. Yan, no? Yung pagsulyap ni Jesus. And then, another important detail ng atin pong gospel passion according to St. Luke, yun pong sabi doon na pinadala ni, P ni Pilate si Jesus kay Herodes at mula nung nagkaroon ng reconciliation yung 
dalawang matagal nang magkaaway. Isipin mo yan. No? Yung pagpapakasakit ni Jesus ay naging tulay upang ayusin ang relasyon ni Herodes at ni Pilato. But I think more than that, pagdating po sa crucifixion, samantalang si Mark, si Matthew, ang hinighlight nilang words kay Jesus ay yung bang Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabaktani. Yan. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Dito po sa Gospel of St. Luke, we will hear healing words of Jesus on the cross. Father, forgive them. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Anya, doon sa isang kriminal. O hindi ba? He healing touch yun ni Lord kahit na nasa krus siya. No? So sana po, sa Palm Sunday na ito of the Passion of the Lord, let us also take the time not only to meditate on the sufferings of the Lord, but lift up to the Lord ano yung pangangailangan natin sa healing touch ni Lord. The cross is the instrument of ultimate healing ng Panginoon. Narito na po ang ating banal na misa. Warm greetings to the subscribers of the Sambuhay TV Mass. And we thank all of you for supporting this uh, apostolate of the Society of St. Paul. Kwaresma po na naman. Panahon para tayo ay maghanda para maranasan din natin ang bagong buhay ng Panginoong Heso Kristo na ibinabahagi sa atin sa Kanyang muling pagkabuhay. Pero walang shortcut po eh. Bago makarating sa muling pagkabuhay, dumadaan po sa apat na pong araw ng panalangin, pag-aayuno, pagkakawang gawa. Bakit? Para maihanda natin ang ating sarili sa pakikipaglakbay kay Jesus, patungo sa kanyang kalbaryo. Kapag may taong nagaanyaya sa atin mag-shopping, daming sasama yan. Kakain, ang dami rin sasama. Good time, marami sasama. Pero kapag ang pupuntahan ay kalbaryo, baka wala nang sumama kay Jesus. Sa katunayan, iniwan siya ng kanyang mga kaibigan. Kailangang ihanda natin ang ating sarili para sumabay, sumunod kay Jesus. At yan ay mangyayari kung hindi na sarili natin, kundi si Jesus ang tuto. Mangyayari yan sa pamamagitan ng panalangin, hindi sarili ang tuto, kundi ang Diyos. Pagkakawang gawa, hindi sarili, kundi ang kapwa. Pag-aayuno, hindi ang sariling hilig, kundi ang pagtitiwala sa Diyos. Yan ang sinabuhay ni Jesus, ganyan din ang paghahanda natin para siya'y makasama. This is Cardinal Chito Tagle from the Archdiocese of Manila. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in His footsteps, so that, being made by His grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in His resurrection and in His life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify, 
these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. As he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. He said, Go into the village opposite you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on each wind on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent went off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying this colt? They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus threw their cloaks over the colt and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the road. And now as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. Sisters and brothers, my dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I give my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. 
I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord the, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The elders of the people, chief priests and scribes, arose and brought Jesus before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man who made our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar. And we think that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priest and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all the day. From Galilee, where he began even to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. 
He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by, accusing him hurstly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priest, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then released him. But altogether they shouted out, Away with this, this man! Release for us! us. Now, Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus. But they continued their shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has done this man I found him guilty of no capital crime? Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then released him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling him for crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder, for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place they called the skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, If he save others, let him save himself. If he is not the chosen one, one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, Save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. No one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear in God? For you are subject to the same condemnation, and indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over to the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was turned down in the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, this man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw and what, what had happened, they returned home beating their breast. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Ito po sa buong linggo ng buong taon ang pinakamahalaga dahil sinisimulan natin ngayon ang mga mahal na araw o Holy Week sa pagdiriwang natin ng tinatawag na Palm Sunday o Passion Sunday. Dalawa po yung tawag. Gagaya ng dalawang bahagi, yung ating pagdiriwang kanina sa labas ay binasbasan ang mga palaspas. Palm Sunday at ang narinig natin sa simula ay ang mga papuri ng mga tao. Kagaya ng nangyari noong panahon ni Jesus, nagsisigawan sila, tuwantawa sila kay Jesus sapagkat naalala nila yung magaganda niyang ginawa. The miracles and healings, the many wonders Jesus has done for all of them. At nilagay po nila yung kanilang pag-asa kay Jesus. Noong papunta na si Jesus sa Jerusalem, sa banal na lunsod, galing sila sa Galilee, ang estima po ng mga tao ngayon, kapag kayo ay sumakay sa kotse mula Galilee hanggang Jerusalem, aabutin kayo ng dalawang oras. Isipin na lang ninyo, sila ho ay naglakad lamang. Si Jesus sumakay sa isang donkey, sa isang asno, pero yung mga tao ay sumusunod-sunod kay Jesus. At kung nakinig kayo mabuti, ang sabi po sa ating reading ay yung kanilang mga balabal, yung kanilang mga cloak, yun ang kanilang inilatag sa dinaanan ni Jesus. Kasi tinitingnan nila si Jesus na isang makapangyarihang guro. At yung iba, ang tingin na sa kanya ay anak ng Diyos, Son of God, Mesiyas. Pero sa likod pala ng kanilang isipan, Ibang klaseng Mesiyas yung kanilang uh, tinitingala. Niisip nila, itong Mesiyas na ito ay kinakailangang magpatumba at dumurog sa kanilang kalabang bansa na sinakop sila, ang Roman Empire. Hindi lang isang bansa kung hindi. Napakalaking dambuhala po nitong Roman Empire. Napaka makapangyarihan. Kaya tuwan-tuwa sila kasi dito sila tumataya kay Jesus. Ito ang aming pag-asa. Malapit na niyang kubkubin ang kuta ng mga Romano. At uh, matataob na ang kapangyarihan ng Roma. Pero napakinggan natin sa second part, fast forward sa ating istorya, kung paanong si Jesus una ay humarap kay Pilato, at napakatsaga naman hong sumagot ni Jesus kay Pilato hanggang sa siya ay uh, dinala na kay uh, Herodes, iniharap sa mga tao at yung mga tao ay di magkamayaw. Ang hinihingi nila ay si Barabas ang palayain at si Jesus ang ipapatay. No. Hanggang sa uhumantong na po sa krus yung ating kwento. 
pinapakita sa atin dito sa isang ebanghelyo, sa isang iglap, ang mangyayari sa buong linggong ito. Kung paano si Jesus ay ipagbubunyi ng mga tao bilang Mesiyas, pero bandang huli, siya ay tataligta ng mga tao. Ito ay nangyayari sa buhay natin. Marami tayong mga bagay, mga tao, kung saan inilalagay natin ang ating pag-asa. Pero kung sa simula, bumapalakpak tayo, tinitingala natin sila, bandang huli, bumabaliktad at tinatalikuran natin. Nangyari ho yan kay Jesus, nangyayari pa rin yan sa mga tao hanggang ngayon, pero ang maganda po dito sa ating Ebanghelyo, ang pinapakita sa atin dito, tinuturoan tayo ni Jesus na humarap sa ating paglalakbay sa buhay. Kahit na nagsisimula ka ng maganda at bandang huli, minamasama ng iba ang iyong ginagawa. Si Jesus, so, hindi niya pinakinggan yung udyok ng mga nasa paligid niya na siya ay lumaban gamit ang dahas. Hindi ho siya lumaban para pumatay ng kapwa-tao at sa halip, ibinigay lamang niya ang kanyang buong buhay. Inalay niya ang kanyang buhay sa krus. Sa simulang simula pa lamang naman, kung tayo po ay uh, uh, magre-rewind ng konte maglalakbay tayo pabalik sa mga pangyayari bago iharap si Jesus kay Herodes, noong si Jesus po ay maghugas ng mga paa ng mga apostoles. Ito yung isa niyang tugon. Paano ako haharap? sa mga taong nasa paligid ko. Pangalawa, noong siya ay arestuhin na at pinugot ni Simon Pedro ang tainga ni Malcus. Natatandaan ninyo, yung kasama sa arresting party. Anong ginawa ni Jesus? Pinigilan si Pedro at kinuha ang taingang pugot at ibinalik at gumaling. Malapit ang patayin si Jesus pero Kumuha pa rin siya ng isang himala. Ito yung tugon niya. At pagkatapos, napakinggan po natin, sabi ko nga sa inyo, napakatsyaga niyang magsumagot kay, kay Pedro, kay Pilato sa mga tanong. Tapos nakita natin kung paano tiningnan niya si Herodes. Itong si Herodes na ang gusto lang naman ay makita siya. Out of curiosity. Pagkatapos, kung paanong Hinayaan ni Jesus na siya ay tulungan ng isang Simon of Cyrene. Isang magsasaka na galing sa bukid. Napadaan lang. Hinayaan niyang tulungan siya. Kung paanong kinausap ni Jesus ang mga kababaihan ng Jerusalem. Ang mga taong tinuturing na pinakamahina at baliwala. Kung paanong kinausap ni Jesus itong kriminal na nakapako sa krus. at ipinangako sa kanya ang paraiso. Pinakita ko dito sa lahat ng maging, naging tugo ni Jesus kung paano tayo uh, maaring humarap sa mga pag-aalipusta sa atin ng ating kapwa. Maari pa rin tayong pumili na gumawa ng mabuti. Sa, halap, sa halip na tahakin natin ang landas ng uh, uh, violence no? o karahasan na natili hong payapa si Jesus at na natili siyang nagbibigay uh, ng magandang halimbawa sa kanyang mga tagasunod. Kaya sa atin pong pagdiriwang nitong Passion Sunday at Palm Sunday Magandang usisain natin ang ating sarili, ang ating mga budhi, at tingnan natin sa mga characters sa istorya ang napakinggan natin, nasaan kaya ako doon? Sa mga nakaharap ni Jesus, ako kaya ay isa sa mga apostol na hinahayaan kong si Jesus na turuan ako kung paano maging isang tapat na lingkod, hugasan ako ng aking mga paa. Ako kaya ay... Baka naman ako'y kagaya ni Pilato. 
na puro lamang tanong pero walang balak sumunod kay Jesus. O baka naman ako yung isang Herodes na curious lamang kay Jesus para lang siyang isang piece of information pagkatapos wala na. O baka naman ako yung napadaan lang pero kagaya ni Simon Pedro may nagbago sa aking buhay. Isang magandang pagbabago. O baka kagaya isa ako sa mga daughters of Jerusalem sa mga taong binabaliwala ng lipunan pero pinangakuan ni Jesus ng kapayapaan. Pinangakuan ni Jesus ng blessings. O baka isa ako sa ang pakiramdam ko sa sarili ko ay pagkasama-sama ako na kriminal na hatulan na nga ng kamatayan pero binigay pa rin sa akin ni Jesus ang pagpapatawad sa huling sandali. Sino ako sa mga taong hinarap ni Jesus sa kanyang mga huling oras dito sa lupa? Sana makita natin ang ating sarili sa kwentong noong paman paulit-ulit na pinapahayag sa atin ngunit sa pagbabalik tanaw natin palagi siyang nananatiling sariwa palagi siyang nananatiling bago at palaging may sinasabi sa mga bagong karanasan natin sa ating buhay. Tumayo po tayo para sa ating prayer of the faithful. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father who will that all human beings be saved through the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ. Uniting ourselves to our Savior, we pray through the passion of Christ, hear us, O Father. Through the passion of Christ, hear us, O Father. May the Church, the people of God, share in your Son's passion through a deep spirit of repentance and by accepting the cross that comes in many different ways, we pray through the passion of Christ, hear us, O Father. May those who serve in public office follow the example of Christ the King, who heals, forgives, and suffers for the good of God's people, we pray through the passion of Christ, hear us, O Father. May those who continue to crucify Christ in their brothers and sisters through their corruption, terrorism, and refusal to stand for the truth be inspired by the example of the repentant thief who acknowledged his sins and asked to be remembered by Christ, we pray through the passion of Christ, hear us, O Father. May those who suffer, the lonely, the jobless, the old, those who grieve for their children, and the victims of extrajudicial killings, find comfort and strength in God who loves them and who gave his only son for them. We pray through the passion of Christ, hear us, O Father. May the Paschal Mystery of Christ inspire Filipinos to let go of their personal interest, especially in the coming elections, so that there will be hope and new life for the country. We pray. Through the passion of Christ, hear us, O Father. Loving Father, strengthen us as we follow the footsteps of Christ in his pains of his sacrifice at Calvary. May these prayers help us be worthy to come and share in the glory of your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we too acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Luis Antonio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the
the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold Jesus, our Messiah and Lord, who journeys to Jerusalem with his burning passion to save us from our sins. Happy are we who are invited to partake in this holy banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. For those who cannot receive communion, join us in praying the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Prayer of Overseas Workers Saint Michael the Archangel, I am about to leave my family and the physical and emotional distance affect me. 
the physical distance means I will be living in a totally different culture where everything will be new. The emotional distance implies that no longer will I be able to embrace my loved ones when I want to. You have done special mission for God and you did it confidently, trusting that everything will be all right because our Creator has everything in His hands. Share with me the same faith. Make this travel a part of my mission here on earth. I have to leave for the good of my family and loved ones. I have to leave to do God's will. While I am away from them, protect them from dangers. Let them feel my presence through my letters and calls. Make us a strong family, even though we are far from one another. Saint Michael, through your intercession, may Jesus be the light of the family and Mary be our mother too. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your head and pray for God's blessings. Look, we pray, O Lord, on these your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you, the blessings of the Father and the Son, and may the Spirit of God, the Spirit of love, be with you all the way. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Kaya po na sinabi natin, eh, tapos na po tayo sa atin pong uh, gaudete et exultate. So, ngayon po ang gusto kong special na pagnilayan natin in connection with Holy Week ay yung kamatayan ni Jesus. Ayan. Ano yung bunga ng kamatayan ni Jesus na ito? Alam niyo yung last pilgrimage ko po doon sa Kalbaryo, isa po sa mga realizations ko. Di ba sinabi ni Lord, The stone that the builders rejected, ang panulukang bato na hindi pinansin ng mga manggagawa, ito ngayon ang panulukang bato 
na ginamit ng Diyos. Alam nyo, nagmarka ho sa akin yung words na yon nung bisita ko sa Kalbaryo, etong nakalipas na pilgrimage. Kasi, alam nyo, pinakita sa amin nung guide, yung palang Kalbaryo, may bitak. Bitak. Abandoned quarry. No? Yan. So, inabando na yung batong yon Hindi na quinari. Kasi sa tingin ng mga nagkwakwari, mahinang klasing bato, may bitak eh. Pero sa bitak na yon doon itinirik ang krus. Wow, di ba? So, ang krus ni Kristo, kung tignan natin, it, is, it looks like it's a defeat. No? Walang kwenta. Pero may bunga. Ano ang mga bunga ng krus? Uh, hayaan po natin na si St. Paul ang magpaliwanag. Unang-una, sabi ni St. Paul, ang unang bunga ng krus ay yung gift, the gift, the unique gift of the removal of sin. At para kay Pablo, yung pag-alis ng kasalanan sa pamagitan ng krus ni Kristo ay unique gift, kakaibang regalo. Bakit kakaibang regalo? Kasi it depended on God. The Father, kung ipapadala niya ang kanyang anak. And it depended on Jesus kung gagawin niya yung paghihirap para sa atin. So it was really a gift of God. We cannot demand the renew removal of sin. It was a gift given on the cross. Yan po ang una ni Pablo. Pangalawa, sabi niya, the cross is reconciliation. Pero, sa kagawian ng usual na reconciliation, yung partidong gumawa ng masama, yun dapat ang unang gumawa ng hakbang sa reconciliation. Ang kaibahan sa krus kanya, yung offended party, si God, ang gumawa ng unang hakbang. Di ba? O, kaya, unusual yung reconciliation na yun. And then, Redemption. To redemption means to buy back. Tayo ay hindi lang po niligtas. Ang krus, sabi ni San Pablo, ay pagtubos. Tayo'y binili uli ng Diyos. And alam nyo, yun pala ang dahilan kung bakit ang Panginoong Yesus kailangan maging tao. Kasi hindi ka pwedeng tumubos ng hindi mo kaano-ano. Yun. So kailangan... Si Jesus, tao, upang matubos niya tayo at may handog ang kanya sarili. Pero ang isang malalim, sabi ni Pablo na bunga ng krus ni Kristo ay atonement. Yan, atonement. Na. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng atonement? Kadalasan, pag narinig po natin yung atonement, ang equation niya sa atin, sacrifice. No? Pero para saan yung sacrifice? Yan. Hindi lang basta-basta nagsasacrifice. Yan. Uh, atonement daw, kung titignan natin, pwedeng i-divide into at one meant. Yan. Nagkakaroon ng pag-aalay upang magkaisa uli. Yan. Magkaisa uli ang Diyos at ang tao. At yan ang ginawa ni Jesus. Idinedicate niya ang kanyang dugo. Alam niyo po sa mga Hudyo, ang dugo ay hindi po meaningful dahil sa kamatayan. Hindi. Ang dugo ay meaningful sapagkat ito'y buhay. So sa krus, dinedicate ni Jesus ang kanyang buhay upang magkaisa uli. Magkaroon ng oneness at one meant atonement ang Diyos at ang tao. Sana nga po, sa Simana Santang ito, maging makahulugan ang atin pong pagdiriwang sa krus ni Kristo. In the meantime, kayo po ay patuloy naming inaanyayahan na maging partner sa atin pong mission. Unang-una, through your love offerings. Nasa screen po natin ang ating mga bank accounts at maraming salamat. Doon po sa mga walang sawa at uh, buwan-buwan ay nagpapadala ng mga blessings. And so we can also bless others. Pangalawa, you can be 
a mission partner by propagating. Ipakilala po natin itong ating apostolado at nasa screen po natin ang ating mga bank account number, uh, uh, cellular number, yan. At pangalawa, yung atin pong mga Facebook at YouTube accounts, yan, para sa overseas na mga OWs at yun pong ating cable channel naman ng TV Maria para po sa Pilipinas. Sa ngalan po ni Father Resti de la Peña at lahat po ng bumubuo ng St. Paul Audiovisuals, iniiwan po namin sa inyong panalangin ni Blessed James Alberione to spend the week well. My dear and sweet Mother Mary, keep your holy hand upon me. Guard my mind, my heart, my senses that I may never commit sin. Bless my thoughts, affections, words, and actions that I may always please you, Jesus and Mary. Give me your most holy blessings. Amen.